Today is about challenging appearances and assumptions of extremism and normality. Today is a lesson in unlearning. And what better way to unlearn than to start our journey at the end and work our way back to the beginning? And what better way to question what's accepted as good and normal than with something as wholesome and everyday as a glass of milk? The source of milk is no big secret, it comes from cows. But that's about as far back as most people trace milk's journey to our refrigerated grocery cases. Most of us grow up thinking that cows are made to be milked. We may think that they have a constant supply of milk, or even that they need to be milked to relieve pressure. Well, let's look at this critically for a moment. Cows are mammals, just like us. And mammals produce milk for one reason, to feed their babies. Cows carry their babies for nine months, just like we do. They lactate to feed their babies, just like we do. And after weaning, they stop producing milk, just like we do. So in order to have a constant supply of cow's milk for human consumption, we need a constant supply of pregnant cows. In the dairy industry, cows are repeatedly inseminated, which is a nice word for raped. Once a cow gives birth, we face another roadblock to our milk's journey. Babies, after all, drink their mother's milk. So to make sure there's a constant supply of milk for us, the babies must be taken away soon after birth. And this is precisely what occurs in the dairy industry. If the calf is male, he is sent to a veal farm where he is tied down, unable to move, or locked in a cage where he cannot even turn around until he's slaughtered when he's only a few weeks old. Veal, an industry that even many meat eaters oppose, would not exist without dairy. Every cup of yogurt, every scoop of ice cream, and every glass of milk is directly connected to the deaths of those baby calves. But we're not quite done tracing milk's path to our cereal bowls. While the slaughter of babies is certainly horrific enough, we cannot forget the mothers who are left behind. Cows bond intensely with their calves and they will cry out for days when they are taken. When residents of Newbury, Massachusetts called the police to report disturbing noises emanating from Sunshine Dairy Farm, the police explained that the mother cows were lamenting the separation from their calves. But not to worry, as the cows are not in distress and that the noises are a normal part of farming practices. This is not anthropomorphizing. It's a mother's grief, and it's absolutely heartbreaking to watch. The bodies of dairy cows generally give out around age four or five, and they are regarded as spent, despite the natural lifespan of 20 years or more. They're sent to slaughter for cheap meats and pet foods and deemed unfit for human consumption. At the slaughterhouse, many of these mothers face their final and most brutal separation from yet another child. While formal statistics are difficult to obtain as most studies focus on the economic cost of fetal wastage, accounts range from approximately 10 to 70% of cows arriving at the slaughterhouse pregnant. But this most horrific and final separation of mother and child was just the last in a cycle of pregnancy after pregnancy and loss after loss. When we push onwards through our dairy cow's beginning, back past the first pregnancy, before she became the broken, hollowed out shell eventually collapsing under the insane demands of her short life, we come to her birth, the moment she emerges into the world, wide-eyed and brand new. The moment that she was taken from her own mother. You see, we talked about what happened to the male calves who are sent off for veal. Well, the daughters of the dairy industry are still separated from their mothers, but they're kept around to take their mother's place, to keep the money machine going and keep the milk flowing, so that every grocery store, every corner shop, every gas station will be sure to stock this wholesome, normalized, entirely ordinary product. We are being sold the pus-filled, 
ultimate outcome of rape, enslavement, kidnapping, abuse, disease, torture, infanticide, and murder whitewashed into an image of wholesome nutrition. As vegan activist Gary Yarofsky has said, it is the greatest magic trick ever performed. And people say veganism is extreme. The animal products that we perceive as mundane when reverse engineered reveal a perversely complex and to put it lightly, ethically challenging journey from genesis through processing and production to the end product. And that is to say from the animal's birth through confinement, abuse, slaughter, denigration of corpses to the shiny, happy, store ready products that we literally eat up without even a single thought as to what the animals went through.